Okay, I think we might be live on here. Okay, I'll let you know if this is going to work, then we'll... Okay, it looks like we are ready to start our class. And we really want to thank those of you that are joining us on our Zoom meeting. You can find yeah, the link. We might be live on here. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right, I had to shut myself off there. Okay, we're excited to have those of you here on Zoom and also those of you on Facebook. I will be getting a link to YouTube. I'll have to put that on in just a sec. But we really appreciate Kelly Sanders doing our class tonight. She will be talking about Roots Magic Basics. And I'm gonna tell you just a little background on, on her that I have. Okay, she is the lead stake family history consultant in the Northridge State. She's loved family history work since ninth grade. She has the bittersweet blessing of having a father that isn't a member of the church and has felt the urge to find his ancestors with the hopes that someday some of them will help him want to join the church. This experience has taught her how to do family history work and find lots of names to take to the temple. So as you can see, she loves family history and that's with the big exclamation point at the end. So with that, we really appreciate you again helping us out, Kelly, and we'll go ahead and turn the time over to you. Thanks, Carol. I forgot. I think I wrote that a lot, long time ago, whatever. What did you, you did. Did it change? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's still not a member of the church, so it hasn't changed. Okay, you can add anything you want. Do you want to tell us anything else? <laughs> no, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm going to share my screen here. Uh -huh. Okay, you got it there. Um, we just see Zoom. You might have to share right. different. Are you? Um, is I'm it just, top? Yeah, I'm trying to get to my things here. Okay. Oh, there's a Google slide over there on the left. Is that the one you want? Yes. Where's okay. the one on the left? Left for me. Um, left for you. Right the tab there. on the very far left. Okay, now I see it. Okay. okay. If everybody else could mute, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, let's, here I wanna get back to the beginning of my slide here though. Should have started it that way, okay. So welcome everybody. Looks like a lot of you do Roots Magic already, so I think this is going to be more fun for me than it is for you because I want to learn from you too. So we'll have time at the end. Um, I only prepared like about 30 minutes at the most with my, my presentation and what I'm going to do. So I think that it'd be fun at the end just to share notes and what works for you and what doesn't work for you and what you've been learning lately, um, and which, what's always been a tried and true thing that you've done. But anyway, um, um, just in case you didn't know, okay, I didn't know if I'd have anybody that knew nothing about Roots Magic, but Roots Magic is a genealogy software program designed to help you organize your family data in a desktop format, which means, of course, you know that it's it's not internet based. It's not like Ancestry or MyHeritage. It's it's your file, and it's 100% controlled by you. So why I'm going to get rid of these people on the side so I can see what my slide says. Okay, well, why should you wanna use Roots Magic um, when there's so many excellent genealogical programs to choose from today? Well, 14 or 15 years ago when I started this, um, uh, they weren't as good as they are now, but I wanted to try Roots Magic because I too wanted to um, change from path. And then as I, and all along, I, there's one reason too that, that to me that it's a very, very personal thing why I stick with Roots Magic and it's because of this scripture, okay? Um, Let us therefore as a church and a people and as Latter-day Saints offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness and let us present in his holy temple a book containing the records of our dead which shall be worthy of all acceptation. Personally, I use Roots Magic because I want to make an offering of a book containing the records of my family that meets this criteria. I'm not saying that other programs can't do this. My Roots Magic file would not be what it is today without Family Search and Ancestry and the other big, big ones. To heat now. But for me personally, 
This program helps me focus on making What's a the matter? Did you turn that the is worthy down? of all acceptation. Is it cold to you now? To find a software program. Okay, turn it up. It was way warm this today. Mm -hmm. Or a home for your family tree. Find one 72. that will be in a book that will meet this, this scripture for you. So this is, these are my six most favorite magic tricks of, of Roots Magic. And magic trick number one is at the, what it can do for my living people, living records of my descendants. Um, it helps me organize the data for all my living family and keeps my family safe. I can keep records of my children and grandchildren, a comprehensive living family history that is not on the internet. I can record blessings, baptisms, ordinations, missions, anything. I can customize what I want to record. Rich Magics gives me more flexibility with the control that I want. Family Search can't do that. They have private spaces, but there's no guarantee that the image in the pictures won't end up on the internet or searchable. One of the big purposes of an online tree like Ancestry and Family Search is to be able to share, and that's what makes that's their strength. And so I think it's um, to have them not do that would defeat their their purpose of having been there. Years ago, when I knew that PATH wasn't going to be supported, like I said before, uh, from the church, um, I knew I needed to change and find another program. And I chose PATH because it, it behaved and was more familiar with me like PATH. Um, and 16 years ago, I wasn't a comfort very comfortable with computers, and I'm still not totally today. And so it was not a very steep learning curve, curve for me to go right from PATH to look what's magic. So that's one of the reasons I like it too. Um, my magic trick number two is that it syncs with family search. And this is what I really love about the program. As I research for an ancestor, I enter all the information I find into my Roots Magic file. And then I access family search right from Roots Magic and it searches for that family, that person in, in family search. I only had to enter my information in once. If the person is found in family search, I mark it as a match in my Roots Magic file. This is what I feel Roots Magic was designed to do, and that is to be a smooth, seamless way to add my ancestor to family search. Once the ancestor is matched, I can share back and forth any information between the two records. And since my father isn't a member of the church, I am frequently adding new names all the time. And this saves me a lot of time with no typos. Magic trick number three, the internet research. Roots Magic helps me do research for my family from one central place on the internet. It gathers hints from family search, ancestry, and find my past and my heritage, if I, all those if I let it, that pertain to my ancestor all from one screen. I look at the hints and determine it if it is truly a record for my ancestor and then I add it to my Roots Magic file. Magic trick number four. I can create specific lists with Roots Magic. When I go on a vacation in a place where some of my ancestors lived, I can generate a list of those ancestors that lived in that area or names of ancestors that died in that town and buried in a cemetery there. Roots Magic then creates a list for me of those people that could possibly be buried in that cemetery. It will also generate a list of problems in my file, like children being born before their parents or missing information like births, et cetera, much like Family Search does with the red exclamation point. But Roots Magic puts those problems in a list, and I use that list to systematically clean up my file. Years ago, I took a class from Lindsay Powell at UVU, and I took it three times, and I probably should take it again. And her motto was for us to be the clean it up and get it right generation in pertaining to our family trees. She taught that we needed to be to help family search be more trusted as to the accuracy and the integrity of the information stored there. Creating lists of problems in my tree helps me have an accurate, clean tree worthy of all acceptation. So magic trick number five. I like Roots Magic because of its printing report capabilities. Years ago, I was into generating books, little books, and Roots Magic helped me do this. I'd like to print my family group records with the photo of the person right on the page. 
There are many kinds of charts and reports that Rich Magic can produce. Of course, they're nothing like the charts that companies like Family Chart Misters and stuff do today, that that's all they produce. But for a simple little book that I'd create for my Christmas presents to my family and gifts, the chart works great for me. Roach Magic's charts does. And lastly, Roach Magic number six. I like some of the magical tools Roach Magic offers me in helping me with my research. I like that I can color code my family to lines. I like that I can see how I'm related to a highlighted person without a click. I like the day calculator tool that helps me all the time when it comes to cemetery dates on headstones and trying to figure out, calculate birth dates for, for them. And then I like the find, every, where, find everywhere tool, which is really cool. I can find a name or a word I have anywhere in my file. And even though I try to be as organized as I can, I still, still need to use that, that, that find everywhere tool. So it helps me stay not too lost. So at this point, I kind of I want to kind of go live um, and just kind of share some of those six ones and then what I do with my Rich Magic file. I, I kind of just struggled on deciding um, which of the many features to, to show and do and just kind of settled that I just would show the things that I just use the most in my research. So if you want to really know, you ladies know this since you use Rich Magic, but you can go to richmagic.com click on learn and then click on webinars and you'll get to see a webinar and anything that and all the features I talked about. Particularly, I would I, I need to rewatch and relearn how to do the, the tree share with Ancestry. It's, I can't quite figure out how, I don't, since I used Roots Magic all along without it, I, I still haven't got used to using it. But anyway, I suggest you do that. So I'm gonna get out of my PowerPoint here and I'm just gonna go to my Roots Magic file and hopefully it'll show up on the screen here. Okay, can you all see that? I guess you're all muted. Like I say, I feel like I'm just talking to my screen. But um, I'm hoping, like I say, when I get finished, we have lots of time to chat and talk about things. We can see it, looks good. Okay, good. Um, so if you have a brand new file, um, you guys don't have brand new files, so and I won't go over that then, you know how to create, but you do know how to create a new file right you just go up to this up here on the left where it says file and you just say new and then you create your new rich magic file and you can create as many files as you want just like you can on ancestry with, with many trees that you can put on here and you can de determine whether you want to bring start right here begin typing your information in or you can click this and report import excuse me information from another program like you know creating a jedcom through from um, family search or through ancestry, whatever. There are limits to how much you can download at a time, but eventually you can get it all in there. So, um, so let's say that you've got, this is your tree. I mean, this is your file that you've got your data in and you've downloaded. And there's, um, this is what it looks like when you get your data in. There are different views to look from right here. You can, lots of people, you know, there's the pedigree view and people like that. There's the family view. This is my favorite one. And this is the one I use, only the one I use basically all the time. There's a descendant view, which there won't be a whole lot. Well, I guess there is for James Dexter Clark. The people view, I don't use very often, only when I wanna go um, kind of look up things over here on the right, if they're, people that are in a certain area. This is all alphabetized by place. So I can find, I can create groups this way. And I used to do that a lot, but I don't do that very much anymore. And the web search, I won't talk about right now, but the timeline up here, they have a timeline too, just like um, Ancestry does and Family Search does now. So, um, and you can go for right from this screen, you can see your notes, okay. Uh, why I did what I did there, and your sources right here, they're right here from the screen also. So, um, and your media is right here. If I had some media, you could see all of this from the screen too, which makes it nice when you can have, when you can click to all these places from one screen, create, you know, less clicks and less time. But back to my favorite view is this view. This is the one, this is my workhorse view, and this is what I pretty much use 90% of the time. Because from this screen, 
I add my kids here, right here, just add a child here, either a new person or somebody already in the file. And somebody would already be in the file, as you, as you ladies know, as if I've unattached somebody because I put them with the wrong parents, but all the data with that person is still intact and right. And so I unattach them for the right parents and then refine them as an existing person and add them here. So that, that's a handy thing. So you don't have to re recreate the person. Um, I can edit people here, right from here. I can click, double click on them. Should be able to double click, yes. And this is, I can add his information if I change it. If it's not James Dexter anymore, he'll always be James Dexter, but just in case I find him new information, I can change it, I can edit. This is where I add my sources. Okay, these are my old, this is how I used to do sources a long time ago. This is kind of an older one, but I can do all my sources for you here. I, I add a source, I go, I can, I usually do a free form when I create my sources and I hit okay when I'm done. And then my sources will appear in this existing source list. And these are all my existing sources that I've used. And um, I select that when I want to create the source for my person. And um, the other nice feature about the source box is that um, once I create that source, that 1900 federal census right there for Iowa, I hit memorize and then I can go back to the kids in this file, all the kids of James Dexter Clark, and I go to their source little box and I just hit paste in the box and it just, and it just paste that's, it's a copy and paste feature right there into the, um, right into their, their sources too. So it's, I don't have to create the source every time new. Um, from this screen, back to this screen, this is how I match to family search and how I talk back and forth to family search. So this little icon right here is your family search icon. And it shows blue when I've matched this person with family search. If I hadn't matched yet, then it'd be white in the background. But I can look at a grant, a lot of glance from well, this way. The kids have been matched. Everybody's been matched. The, the parents, the grandparents, and the kids are all matched. But once you go there, I can click and it goes, takes me right to the my person and family search screen. And they I can compare. And so um, we're pretty much all up to date, has the same thing I have. Lately, I haven't been putting, when I first started with my Roots Magic file, I didn't create um, Facts, I just did the basic facts like Beth, birth, marriage and death and burial usually, and just the LDS facts for temple. That's all, I, and then I usually, you know, in my, just looked on my sources for, um, to know where their residence was. But now I can, I'm trying to, so this, um, to prove a point here is that you can do this and you ladies know this, that I can bring information from my family search people, person on the right over to, my Roots Magic people and just add it there. And it says, do I want to add this to my as a new event? Yes, so I'm going to say, okay. And so I'm going to do that right now because I'm started doing this. Um, I want to, this has just been created since 2017 for her. Um, so now I have added this information right from Family Search Over without having to type it in any way at all. So I really like that about Family Roots Magic with Family Search. Um, notice that I can see sources here too. You can see the sources in Roots, Mag um, Roots Magic over here and sources from Family Search on the, the right over here. Um, there's some things I don't like about Roots Magic, and I think this is one of the features I don't like is um, in my Roots Magic file, I like to have a, a general, uh, the 1880 federal census, and that's all I do. And then when I go on that source, then um, Right on, and uh, usually in my, let's see, let's do this. This is probably more of a recent source I've created. No, okay. Um, family search, when they create their source, if I was to say, okay, let's say I didn't have an 1870, which I don't, okay? So I wanna bring that over. So I would bring that over, but I don't want to because it creates a new source in my source list. And if I had to create for every census record, for every one of my people that are attached to that census, my source list would be bigger, a bigger file than my whole file altogether. So I don't do that. I don't know. I'd like to know what you ladies do and see if you, what you do to get around that, or maybe it doesn't bother you. Um, but I, 
I like to have more of a general source thing. And then right within the source, when I use it, I create my notes and my details only with that person rather than on this part. So, well, I, I'd like to talk to you about that here, but, um, and any kind of notes I'd have would be here right here too. So, um, but that's, that's, you know, that comes from all that. And also from this list, you can see right to this temple data, okay? This on the temple thing, it's been matched. So that, so the data is gonna show right up. And here we go. And notice that I don't even have this confirmation anymore. So I can add that to copy to my risk management. So smooth, this goes right over. There's my information. Um, but it's been a while since I visited James Extra Clark in this file. So uh, also um, there's Family Search Central at the top. And I don't know, I'd like to know what you girls think about this. I, I kind of just use these icons basically to get to Family Search all the time. But there is this main one up here. If I can get rid of this box at the top, there we go. Um, this is Family Search Central. And this is basically a, a, a report of what my file looks like in Family Search and what it can do for my Family Search file. Um, it's always going on. Notice here it says that I have new information on 2,119 people. Whoa, okay. That's a lot of people I need to go check and see what's changed. And I don't keep up with it, you can see very often. But I do like this in the sense that every now and then I can look and say, I have 554 people in my file and Roots Magic all ready for temple ordinances. And then it tells me that I have 906 people in progress. I have some people that need more info. Those ones I like to focus on because then I get them ready for temple work. I have 554 people right there that matches up here that are ready to do. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I, this, this would be a discussion. I really miss serving at the Family History Center because I don't get to nerd with everybody and hear what they're doing. But um, lately, because of COVID, I've been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of names, adding a lot of names. And, and I haven't bothered to reserve them because the temple's not open yet for me to do them. But even before that, before COVID, I started just getting names already and leaving them there and not reserving them and hoping that some of my other, all my ancestors, descendants, other than just me, a fourth or fifth cousin would come along and they'd find it and just do it. And that would make the work go faster because I just can't get all the work done because I have so much work to do. Um, but anyway, at a glance, this is what Family Search does. And as you notice right down here on both these screens on the Ancestry um, Tree Share screen and in your, your Family Search Central screen, you can go right here to learn how to do this better and how to do it up here. I don't know about you girls, but I never use the auto match and maybe you guys do, but I, I'm really worried. Sometimes they're not matches and I, I'm not very smart, but I do, I do feel like sometimes I do know more about the computer than, than the computer does because I know more about my family and that's why I don't feel like I can do that. But anyway, that's Family Search Central. <coughs> right from the screen back to this family group record screen, I can go to my, um, the light bulb. And the light bulbs are my internet searches, okay, my internet hints. So right here, I can see that James Dexter has 32 pending ancestry hints. So if I go to the hints, which is uh, James Dexter at the Clark, when I created him at the time, I didn't have ancestry. So that's why he's got a lot of hints. I haven't used them, but they're in there already um, from, from way back. But anyway, from this screen, you can look on these and see what the hints are. Um, and you could also, if you want to look at it, the record right here shows what um, is on the 1910 census and what you have in your Rich Magic file. And I don't really like this. That's why I don't use it very much on Ancestry Hints because I want to see the whole, the whole um, family group. But in any way, you can reject it or accept it and go inside. And then if you want to see what it looks like on family, on Ancestry, you got to view it online there. And I don't just want to go through that trouble. But I don't want James De Mix Dexter Clark anyway, because he's done. I've, I've researched him out and got all of um, Family Search, they like there's four new pending ones for that. And My Heritage, you click on those, it takes you right to My Heritage. And they're using my tree because this is my dad and my great grandpa, James Dexter, and My Heritage Tree. There's a brown family tree, how about that? I think I'm, that's Faith Brown, she's a brand new convert. I met her through Family Search. And there's a Sanders tree, that's me, but my daughter, 
So anyway, they're usually trees on families on my heritage that I've already added. Um, so I don't really often use those because they're, they're ones I use already, but. Um, so that's how you use the web hints. And then um, back to my cool tools that I used. Here's the tools here. I do have to click on there rather than um, any place from right on the screen from the family group record, but this is where I um, problem search, create my problem list, the things that aren't working out in my file. file. Um, this is where I color code people. This is where I, I like to set the relationships because this, if I set relationship as me as a root person, then whoever highlighted shows my relationship down here in the left-hand corner. I like to look at that right from this screen. Sometimes um, I use the date calculator a lot. I put the, um, the date when they died, usually have you know, the death date, and then usually a lot on the headstones, I have how many, 16 years, three months, 12 days old, and then I calculate it and it gives me their birth date from that, which is an approximated date, but it's a really close approximate. So I like to use that one a lot. That helps me at, without looking at calendars. Um, it's here also, you, you go to your file options to see who you, getting your, your um, web hints are from, and you can manipulate what you wanted to show and how you want your format to look, all that stuff. Um, anyway, that's my tools, the cool tools. Reports are over here. You guys see these, you guys know these. Um, I, you, you can create all kinds of reports, okay? Um, whether they're pedigree charts or family group records, um, lists, I like the lists because I, can run through here and create a duplicate list of my whole in my whole file and clean up my duplicates without just discovering them on my own. Missing information, I like to use that one. Um, I like to use. Um, I do recreate recreate some reports sometimes, and then you can do your blank reports. I, you can make big wall charts with these. I've done the wall charts before. The, in fact, some of these are what I used for. Um, um, for the walls that are our, our family history fairs. But anyway, those are my tools, reports. The search up here, I like to use this because um, rather than go up, I either go to this, this hourglass, this Sherlock Holmes looking thing for this, but this is how I find a person really quick in my file. And you just start typing and you just, it just finds the person like if, if it's, if it's um, like me, Clark, Kelly, and that takes me right to there, okay. And then takes me right to, to, to me and my sisters. Um, but the cool part of this, the search feature is this one is what I like, is this find everywhere one. I use this a lot. I, um, if I can't remember, I thought, I know there's somebody in my file. I sure, I heard, I think there's a, a um, they, you know, they're from Florida. What was that, what was that county in Florida? Um, I'll think of the county and I'll put it in there and then it'll search my whole file for, I could just show you, I can guess. So let's say um, I have a lot of family, Benson, Vermont. Um, so I it starts searching through my whole people, any people that have any reference to Benson, Vermont. I mean, I'm searching for a place more than a person, but it find peoples, it finds that word in my whole file. And so in all my notes, and it mentions Vermont then and Benson, it'll be there. And I can look at anything that's attached to this. And I use this a lot. I, I, um, it helps me um, go back to things that I can't remember. And um, anyway, um, sidebar, okay? I like to use the sidebar. That, that also, it's a search feature you can get up there. If you get really lost, you can wanna go home, you can go right to your root pusher right there. But, when I get lost, or at least do I don't know where I am, and that happens sometimes more often than lately, it's been happening more. I use a sidebar, and the sidebar has, um, let's see, I need to make my sidebar bigger, it looks like. Right here, it has a bookmark thing. And so this keeps, tra not the bookmark thing, but this is my history list, my history, not bookmark. This tells me who the last person I was visited, and last person that I and highlight right now is Kelly, that's me but I was at James Dexter. So I wanna get back to James Dexter to show you, then I can go right there, look at my history list. So I'm never really lost. And I know what, what I was most recently working on where I was visited in my Roots Magic Pal. But I also like to bookmark people. 
and my bookmarks here are these people that I've worked on and researched, and I just don't want them to, to go by the wayside, but I don't quite have them ready to get ready to go to the temple. There's something I'm kind of missing on them. So when I want to get really, really, you know, if I find some new records collections or something or new, and then I'll, I'll look on these people. Like I just recently, just a year ago, pretty recent, got a newspaper.com subscription. And so I want to go through these people and look for them in newspapers now because that was one source I never really looked for in them. And um, anyway, I like that. And then the last thing, and then we'll turn over just a regular talk. Um, I like um, the important part of Roots Magic is your backups, okay? So you go to your file. And I'd like to know what you guys lady, ladies do for backup, but I back up to my um, to my Dropbox. I usually do Dropbox, but you can back up to Google Drive now. And then sometimes I actually make a copy for my file and I copy that, make a copy, not just a backup, but a copy up in my, uh, my, drip, uh, my Dropbox um, subscription site. And then sometimes I will, um, I do have a, a 32 gig thumb drive that I do my backups on too. So I do have an external kind of drive um, that I back up to. And I have a, I have even having a brick, but since I got this new computer, I haven't hooked it up to the brick. So I haven't been doing automatic backups to that, but backups are important. So if you have a rich magic file, please create some kind of a, a system of, of when you back up, whether it's every time you're in or once a week or once a month, I do it usually about, I do it about every two weeks I make a backup. Um, but that's something just don't forget to do girls because you can lose your file. But the good news is if you have a tree on Ancestry or Family Search, you can always redownload. It won't be the same and you'll have lost a lot of your data, especially your notes and things if they're not there and maybe your media, but at least you won't have lost everything. But that's why you want to make sure you have a backup family of your Rich Magic file. So, so I want to um, I want to unmute people now and I'm hoping that we can start asking questions and I'd be interested to hear if anything what I said, what you guys do and compare because I want to learn from you guys too. So so if I'm, I'm done with my presentation, other than, um, yeah, I'm done with my presentation. So um, if, if that's okay, Carol, that we can unmute people and see um, if anybody has any questions or ask things, um, I'd like to be able to help you, so. Yes, thanks so much, Kelly. Yeah, if everybody comes off, um, that would be awesome to have a discussion about what you do. Is there anything you want to ask them, Kelly? Or does anybody want to ask Kelly? Well, I, I, I want to, I would like to know how, if they use um, tree share, which I didn't show up here, this tree share. Um, I kind of showed it, but um, oh, okay. this is, this is what, how it syncs with Ancestry and, and what to do it. But every time you use it, it, it syncs up with your tree to check to see if there's any changes on here. And there is changes and there, that I just recently made. And that's because when I um, uploaded my tree, um, cause I, I upload my tree like once a year <laughs> in Ancestry, just to keep it more current because without, because I don't want to maintain all these trees. So yeah. I do it once a year. Anyway, it shows any changes that, I, that were made in my, my Ancestry tree. So I can, can get compare it with my tree on my Roots Magic and then I can see if they're the same or, or um, look at that person and say, okay, I'm gonna add that or delete or whatever. So anyway, so how about you, um, Luann, what do you do? What do I do for what? <laughs> in Roots Magic, do you, um, in Roots Magic, I was just going to ask: Do you use the Roots Magic to go very much? I used to years ago, but I don't anymore. Well, I I use it when I I volunteer at the Family History Center at uh, the Alpine, uh, the old Tabernacle, and uh, I find it really a good thing to use the roots magic to go because then I can just and I keep it uh, in you know I keep up to date on everything so it's all right. backed up so and, that, and that's cool and I, I, I and, you know I used to do that before I took my computer before I had a laptop mm -hmm. so with the family history center in, in Linden I just bring my laptop in, so my, I, my my roots magic files with me already yeah but, but the roots magic to go is really a neat thing it, it's 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 very portable you're right yeah, I really like it. I have several files on it, just as I do on my Roots Magic, and so I, I keep them up to date, and I, I like it a lot. It's a good, good program. 
So, um, Carol, how about you? You know, I'm not as advanced on this. I, you know, I kind of went over and started using family search and ancestry. And so I, I do come back though when I'm really doing some deep research and, mm -hmm. and use it for that. But um, I appreciate some of the things that you showed because I haven't been as up on it. Well, I, you know, I, it, the, to be really honest, so I, I, as I started looking through my Ritz Magic file, I, I saw that I had um, morphed into different ways of, of doing my research, you know? Uh -huh. I, a lot of it is the last year or so, I really rely heavily on family search because I like the way that their hinting has come so, so far. Right. Uh -huh. more accurate. So if I, and, and, and the advantage I have, and I don't know, I, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a bittersweet, but a tender whatever thing for me is because my dad isn't a member, my tree is pretty much all the work I've done. Mm -hmm. So I know it really well. And I don't have to deal with a lot of mixed pioneer lines and messy things. And I, you know, there's people that get in there and there's, there's a few things that have gotten kind of messed up because they're, they're basically clear back from Plymouth, you know, colony. So there's a lot of those families that are messed up a little bit, but basically that's been really good researched, but not like, not like the pioneer line. So I felt really safe with my, with my right. file that way. So, hey. I know that's true. That's me too on my mom's side. And well, both of mine. Hey, but really quick, I forgot. I was looking down when you said about bookmarking. How did you bookmark someone? Um, if I was like, say if I'm researching Gula, I love that name. Uh -huh. And I wanted to make sure I didn't forget her. You just uh -huh. go over here and say, and just click on that little book up here to the left. Oh, right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I then see. it just puts it right in there. And then I have a running list of where books, you know, People that I and I and then when I go through and find her, like I'm going to add her right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So she should be down here with the alph they're alphabetized. Okay. She should be down here now. And she's not. Okay, Gula. I'm going to bookmark her. Does it? Do you have to refresh? I yes. probably have to refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, she should appear on there. Uh -huh. If I want to get rid of them, let's say like, um, and I worked on her and researched and I got her all done and I remove her from the list. I just use that little X and remove her. Oh, that's good. I didn't know that feature. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That's really good. Um, like I mentioned before, and I'd be interested if, you know, Carol Reynolds and Marie, what you feel about this, but what it's one thing I don't like about Roots Magic is when I'm in the screen and I'll show you real quick. Okay. Let's go to, um, He's so researched out. I should go someplace where I'm kind of in the middle of researching. Let's see. Let's. He's, he's one of the newer ones I'm just started working on. Okay, this is Theodore. There's a lot of little problems I need to do, but I've kind of matched this with Family Search and brought over the records from Family Search. Now I want to research them and make sure they're right and do any kind of changing back and forth. But if I'm in Theodore right now and I. Let's see. I've matched him. So if I go to my family search shared screen with the him, um, and I go to sources, and let's say I have an 1850 source. Here's mine. I'm just going to do this just, and I can change it later. But I want to do that. So I can add right from this screen my source to family search, and I tag him. So I'm going to tag his person, his name, his gender, and his birth. And then, um, and I gotta move the screen again so I can see it. Then I'll say, okay. And so I'm gonna, I, sometimes I give the reason, sometimes I don't, but not right now. Anyway, so that person now has, I've added that to the family search screen, 1850 census. And that's the one I just add. Well, if I go look like that in family search, this, this it has these little carrots, like a neat, nice, you know, source like it does if I do it from right from family search. So I have stopped basically the last oh, year adding my sources this way to family search. I, since I've usually researched them and I know where they are because I found them and added them to my risk magic file, I'll go and tweak all my search, search parameters in family search and find them on family search really fast and then add my sources that way rather than add them from risk magic. 
Oh. I'd like to know if anybody, does that bother anybody else? No, I do the same. You do the same? Okay. I do. Yeah, I, I wish Ritz Magic would let him. I wish it would look like the way I put it in Ritz Magic. Mm -hmm. on family search. Right. So it doesn't look the same, especially with the newer ones I've been doing. Like with him, Marie, if I did it with And this is Marie. Hi. And um, I appreciate you doing this class. I haven't used Roots Magic since I started my mission. In fact, I've hardly done any of my own re research since I started my mission. Oh, wow. I really appreciate you doing this. It kind of refreshed what I need to get doing with uh, Roots Magic. I had a patron that called. Mark. And I had a question. She hadn't even used um, Family Search. Uh, she'd only used Family Search, except she wanted a, she loved PATH. And so I suggested um, that she look into Roots Magic and Ancestral Quest and see which one she liked best. Because I bought Ancestral Quest from my mother because she was more used to working with PATH and it seemed a little more, a little simpler for her. Yeah. But anyway, I appreciate you doing this. Well, you're, you're welcome. Thank you, Carol, for asking me. But back to Carol um, Hill, when you, um, she's been said that before we started, she was sharing that she was working with um, a non-member who has a tree on ancestry and um, the class that she's helping her do is, is all on family search. So I don't know what you guys think, but we've always, I thought um, if I was starting all out brand new today and didn't know anything about what I was doing, I think I'd either stick with one of those programs, either Family Sir or Ancestry or My Heritage even, but I would stick with one and really, really maintain that tree as my base tree. And I would use Ancestry and find my past. And if I wasn't a member of the church, Family Search as a resource search, as research, rather than a place to store my, my stuff. I'd always, always make sure I was in one tree I was maintaining because otherwise it's too hard to maintain three or four trees, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Does anybody else, what do, what do other people do? Carol Reynolds, I have, what do you do? There, I'm unmuted. I have my best tree is on family search and uh, Roots Magic is a duplicate of it. Um, I've had to go back and change things back the way I had it when people get it all messed up. <laughs> oh, so you use your Roots Magic to go back to the, as your reference to try to clear things up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if someone has changed things I yeah. wrong on Family Search. Uh, the only reason I have a tree on Ancestry is because of the DNA. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. But Family Search has the buttons over to the left that you can search in Ancestry so easily. Yes. To try to clear things up. Is that yourself? Yeah, if someone has changed things, I'd search. Uh, the only reason I have a tree on Ancestry is because of the DNA. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I maintain that the, the, that's what makes ancestry real powerful and, and my heritage and find my past is to have a tree on there so that you can, you can get their hints use them for research and they, you know, their, their DNA matches. Um, I like to use, I, I, I think that my, I, my research and the way I research and stuff like that would be crippled if I didn't have an ancestry account. <laughs> That's what makes ancestry real powerful and, and my Oops. heritage. Oh, I hear my voice. Oh, oh, oh. I hear the recording. I have to. I was trying to make any matches. Um, I like to use, I, 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 I think someone has, okay, I just. <laughs> All right. I was going to say something. I don't have my picture tonight because I'm not really looking very good. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's funny because I was just faithful and keeping up my files and my genealogy management programs. 
And now it just feels like I work almost exclusively in family tree. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel like I'm cleaning up family tree and uh, I really try to source everything really well. And I try to make really good reason statements. And I found if I take the time, people don't go in and change it. If I really yeah. make a good argument, um, though I do have one, I know I taught that class and I went back today and somebody had switched it all back. Remember I taught the class on solving problems in family tree. Uh -huh. it's, just, it's just a perennial problem. So I don't know. Um, I need to do a little bit more work on really arguing my arguments better, but uh, <laughs> what, what I was, so I don't know. It just, it seemed like I was, spending so much time duplicating all my stuff, but I do keep very, very consistent research logs and I put the ID number on it and I just, I don't even really file them anymore. I just keep them in a binders by, by chronologically. And then I just go back every so often, go through my binders and check on those people that I've worked on and just see if everything's still going well with them. And, um, oh, but cool. I do have a couple of, lines where it's just so many people have the wrong information and then find a grave has it wrong and that's why it keeps popping back up okay. i really need to contact the guy and find a grave but yeah. i just i i kind of wanted to watch this because i really feel like i should have my own files um my concern about your ancestry tree is what happens when you die i mean uh, well, what happens know. when you can't get on the internet <laughs> Or you don't have a subscription anymore. I mean, yeah, or subscription or anymore, exactly. just, I've, I've seen instances where commercial companies have totally sold out to someone else and they say, well, we don't really want to do that anymore. We're making so much money off our DNA. Let's just drop the trees. Or, I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of my concerns about keeping your stuff only online is that yeah. you're at the mercy of somebody. I've, you know, I just see like Google will drop a feature that we use all the time and then they'll say oh we're not going to do that anymore and then you know you stored all your photos with them or something oh we right. don't want to do photos anymore it's taking too much of our server so yeah. that's the scary thing about digital yeah so have a backup for sure huh yeah definitely use your backups uh, all several backups you're right but i do feel like the family search has promised that if you share with them they will in some form keep whatever you Who is share talking at the same time yeah. sorry too Can many you, people you, talking at you, once you. i can't understand it's garble yeah yeah just if you're not talking make sure you're on mute yeah i could hear it okay barbara i could too i could too that's okay. weird I wonder who is it from? Because everybody else has been muted, but me and Barbara at the time. And me, yeah. You, and you. Okay. Well, thanks, Barbara. I don't know if she got back <laughs> muted. I'm not sure what happened. Was that Tom, Neil? Um, were you the one talking? Can you not understand it? I can go in and mute people. I've done that. Yeah. Muted, but me and Barbara at the time. Well, I, I don't know who, yeah. who else is there. I can see, you know, five okay. people, but that's about it. Oh, yeah, there's 10 of us total. So. I'll tell you a couple things that are yeah. really... Is that Tom, Neil? Yes. Are um, we the one talking? Can you not understand? You're delayed. Well, there was oh. two people talking at the same time. Someone's so talking and mute people. Someone's got the YouTube video running at the same time. I, I don't know who, yeah. who else is there. I can see you know, five people, okay. but that's about it. Yeah, someone running the YouTube channel at the same time. That are really... Yes. You're delayed. Well, there was oh, people delayed. talking yeah. at the same time. Someone so, got the YouTube video running at the same time. Why is this thing delayed? It sounds like there's um, someone has the YouTube channel on at the same time. Do I have it going? Yes. Maybe I do. Yeah, maybe you have it on. Okay, is that you? 
I got to turn the YouTube off. Yeah. Why is this thing delayed? <laughs> I'm going to have to go in and edit the video. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah, maybe you have it on. Okay. I got you? it. No, I, I got to find Zoom again. There we go. Okay. Got a bunch of things up at the same time. Right. So it was delayed and it was. I didn't realize I still had it on. I thought I turned it off. Yeah, that's you know, still one right. of the things I've recently used Roots Magic for, which is really helpful, is with Family Search. I got to look at the camera, don't I? With Family Search, you know, you can't download a JetCom. Right. And so, what you can do is you can move the information from Family Search to a new file in Roots Magic. And then in Roots Magic, you can create a JEDCOM. But if you want to also, if you've done a bunch of work in Family Search and you want to put it into Roots Magic, when you download that file, there's a, um, a uh, routine under File that says Compare Files. Mm -hmm. And so you can compare the two files and go through it. Now, it's difficult for me. I got a really large database, but, but the point is that, that you did the work for in Family Search that didn't get into Roots Magic. And then you can upload them to Ancestry. And, you know, I've got trees in five or six different programs. And the reason I do is because I get hints from Geninet. I get hints from Filet which is a French website. I get hints from Roots Magic and My Heritage. You can sign up for those when you get in because they all have different algorithms that search differently. And so you can find things that you wouldn't find any other way. And so that enhances my research to the point where I get these hints and I'm so far behind on those it's unreal because I'm yeah. teaching two, three classes a week on the internet. So what happens is that uh, I end up with uh, uh, more hints than I can actually manage from different sources. I mean, I've had hints from, have you ever heard of Open Archives? It's a Dutch site in the Netherlands. And so, uh, yeah, they're just great things that you can utilize. And if you're not putting your tree into these files and like, uh, then you're not getting the benefits that Family Search has prepared for us is to utilize those files. And once again, I got to emphasize that the algorithms are different. The search routines are different. You're going to find things with Ancestry, with Family Search, with Geninet and other sites, Find My Past is a great one uh, that you wouldn't find. For instance, sometimes when I can't find something in a census record, I can go to Find My Past. And because they have a different algorithms, they'll find what I'm looking for. Geninet will do the same. But another thing that happens is in, um, yeah, right. Oh, in Roots Magic, you have all the state censuses. And so you can go in and find all the state censuses in Ancestry. And then with the tree sync, you can download those to your Roots Magic. So Roots Magic becomes a collection point for all your data that you can keep, uh, as far as you know, clean and, and straight with all the tools that these other sites don't have. So it, it's, it's a good way to manage all that stuff. You're right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you've got to, I, I think if you don't use these other sites, I, I know it's work, but you know, uh, and, and, don't, and, and, and don't you think Tom, that I think all, all, what we're saying here too, is everybody, um, there, there's a, so much out there for us to take advantage of, and you've got to find out what really works for you. 
That's and, right. But just stick with it. Stick with it and be That's right. like, like Barbara too. You 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 get your you to get the way you keep your record keeping so that it works for you and that you can understand it too. And then share, share, share. And you've got to share it on these online trees. That's right. It's really important that you do that. And you can update your trees all the time. Family Search has just come out with a new, not Family Search, My Heritage has come out with a new DNA where they will, it's called uh, Family Relativity. And what they'll do is they'll take names and DNA and they'll try to match them up with other trees. So I got one today, right? But the point was they had matched it up with four different trees to find a possible cousin for me. Well, you know, it wasn't right, but that's not the point they're trying to do. And so when you have those trees out there and your DNA, and you can load your DNA on Genonet, uh, My Heritage, and Filet. I don't know, not Filet yeah, yet. Filet. Um, but I mean, I'm my grandmother was Swedish, so I even have my tree on Archive Digital. So think about that because the information, yeah. uh, you know, there's only what was the statistic? One percent of the world's information is on the internet right now, and uh, just think of that. And uh, oh. So anyway, I'm sorry, I talk too much. No, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just thankful for your, for your comments and thank you for even tuning in tonight, so. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was a little late, but we were out. We didn't try to get in in the first place. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you have to use the password? Um, uh, you know, yeah, I didn't go far enough down on the email. Oh. <laughs> You know, so I got into yes. Barbara's class from last week, oh. and it wasn't. <laughs> All right. Oh, different. Carol, are you there? Yeah, she is. Don't. Uh, I am. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll talk later. Okay. okay. Give us um, a call. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, is there anything else? Is that? I well, think... I could I could say a lot of things, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now our time has run out. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you for doing that. All right. That. Hey, thanks so much, everyone, for coming. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Luann. Thank you. Don't nice to meet you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank yep. you, Kelly.